Hello and welcome back to North East Nostalgic. Today we're exploring the Common Room, the home of the North of England Institute of Mining and Mechanical Engineers. The North East's connection to industrial history is something I'm really passionate about, with generations of my family working in the coal fields and shipyards. I think literal coal dust is in my blood and it's something I'd like to delve deeper into. Let's go back to Victorian England. Coal seams were being sunk in record time with an extensive network of tunnels underground crisscrossing around the northeast, with even mines stretching out under the sea like Monk Weamouth Colliery in Sunderland. Whilst the coal trade was booming, there was a problem. Devastating explosions were occurring in the collieries with miners losing their lives underground. Following an explosion at Felon in 1812, a society was set up in Sunderland to improve the safety of gas present in the mines. But despite changes, deaths occurred more frequently, with a huge explosion at St Hilda's Colliery killing 52 people. A meeting was held on the 3rd of July 1852 for colliery owners, viewers and others interested in the coal trade, forming the North of England Institute of Mine and Engineers to discuss the prevention of accidents ventilation of coal mines and the general workings of the coal mines. This is the incredible Wood Memorial Hall, with the sky-lit barrel vaulted ceiling towering 39 feet at its highest point, alongside stained glass windows by Cook of London. This room would have been used as a library and office space for the mining and engineering organisations that were part of the Institute. Being a celebration of graft and glory, the North of England Institute of Mining and Mechanical Engineers holds one of the largest, most comprehensive public collections on mining and engineering in the whole world. The gentleman depicted in marble was the first chairman and president of the Institute, Nicholas Wood. In his first speech in 1852, he said the aims of the Institute were to devise measures to alleviate the dreadful calamities occurring in the collieries, as well as establishing an institute that looked more at the theory, art and practice of mining. Nicholas Wood was president from 1852 until the 19th of December 1865 when he died aged 70. Through meetings, discussions, presentations and the publication of research papers, the Institute tried to fulfil their aim of measures to reduce accidents in the mines. Acting from theoretical research and the practice of mining meant that they really could get to the bottom of problems and stopping them from happening again. You can just imagine the working groups exploring mechanical coal cutting, mechanical ventilators and even flameless explosions right in this very room. The names of past presidents are gilded on the polished wood panelling within the wood memorial hall with the carbon of the river god time featuring over the doorway. The Institute's motto, Monio et Mono, is carved alongside, meaning I advise and I protect. Before leaving the hall, I spotted this little bit of hidden history. 
original bell buttons that would have notified certain staff for assistance, as well as Bakelite light switches. Today this building is known as the Common Room of the North, inspiring future innovators and engineers by telling the stories of the North East. Proudly sharing our heritage, the Common Room often have exhibitions that shed a light on the engineering and mining presence in our region. The wealth of the North delves into the geology of materials that were mined and continue to be mined here in the North. Whilst we think of coal as being the main thing to be dug up from underground, gold ore, carbonate and ammonite have been found right under our feet. Another exhibition in this space was Robert Stevenson and Co. Bicentenary Exhibition, showing the incredible history of the first company in the world created specifically to build railway engines, and it was right here in Newcastle upon Tyne. Through illustrations and photographs, the exhibition delves into the beginnings of the locomotives that opened the Stockton and Darlington Railway, as well as the iconic rocket that had a multi-tube boiler and a separate firebox. I love this original top hat, which was worn by Edward Peace, one of the founders of the Robert Stevenson and Company, founded in 1823 here on 4th Street in Newcastle. I hope you liked this little look around the common room. Please let me know if you'd like to see more industrial history videos and I'll see you soon.